This week on Maker Update, Clocks for Ninjas, Hackaday Prize, What Happened to Maker Fair Chicago, Skateboard Slide Guitars, Piecade Hats, Feather Cases, and this weekend's Maker Fairs. It's Wednesday, March 22nd. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you guys had a great week. I'm feeling good about a project I've got 99% ready to go. Hopefully by the time you're watching this, actually, it will be up already, so you can watch that and enjoy that. Uh, I'm also feeling really great about the contributions you guys gave me for the Hello Kitty car project. It's gonna be cool, I swear. It's gonna be cooler than it sounds. <laughs> and um, yeah, with that, let's keep the show moving, starting things off with the project of the week. This week, maker extraordinaire and ninja in training, John Park unveiled this gigantic LED stopwatch, complete with a breakout controller for starting, pausing, stopping, and resetting the timer. There's also a separate finish line stop button mounted on top of a three inch PVC tube. The whole setup is currently installed at a gym that does training for American Ninja Warrior, allowing people to race the course and hit the stop button at the end to compare their times. For authenticity, John even hooked up a car horn to the finish line button. Now, as beautiful as this project is, for me, the real star is the documentation John has on building one for yourself. John breaks down what it takes to build just one of the seven segment digits. Each one is made up of seven sections of NeoPixel LED strip plus single LED dots for the decimal and colon. John includes the CAD files for the sandwich of materials needed to hold and diffuse the LEDs he cut his out on acrylic using a laser cutter, but there's no reason you couldn't print these out as templates and cut them manually with a jigsaw, or even box cut them into some cardboard if you really wanted to. The whole thing runs on an Arduino M0 Pro, which has some extra memory that's useful for the code and addressing all those LEDs. John also wires up his own board for level shifting the three volt output of the Arduino to the five volts needed for the LEDs. The end result is so professional looking, it's crazy. He even shows how he packaged everything up inside of a $30 heavy duty enclosure made for sprinkler timers. I love it. And there are so many great tips within this guide, such as how to diffuse LEDs, how to manage a rat's nest of connections, and how to use cat five ethernet cable to run electronic connections across a room. I also think it's a great project that could be adapted for any sport. It could be uh, used as a giant clock in your house maybe, or you could use it as a big old kitchen timer maybe some Iron Chef timer. Uh, you could also use it like a giant Christmas countdown clock. That could be cool, right? Anyways, well done, John. And now for a little maker news. This week, Hackaday officially launched their 2017 Hackaday Prize. This is my favorite competition every year, in part because it is really by and for the maker community. And more importantly, because it finds a way of putting our creative focus on making things that make the world a better place. This year, there are five main categories for entry. There's the Internet of Useful Things, emphasis on useful. Wheels, Wings, and Walkers, which is a challenge for mobility solutions. Assistive Technology, a challenge to help people with physical or mental challenges. An Anything Goes Challenge that is open to anything with a clear benefit to humanity. And a Best Product Challenge, which circles back around on anything that was entered and singles out the most extraordinary product. Entries are open now and it is free to enter and there are over $250,000 in cash prizes that are given out in this thing. So even if you have the most vague idea of a project you think might be cool, you should throw your hat in the ring. In other news, last week I caught that Maker Fair Chicago, the newest of all the big flagship Maker Fairs, has been postponed. It was going to take place on April 22nd and 23rd, but now the website is vaguely saying fall of this year. That's a bummer. And I haven't seen anyone directly comment on what happened, but hopefully it's nothing that can't be worked out. All right, and now for one more project. This past week, Instructables user Beavis Christ posted this great guide on making your own lap steel style guitar using a skateboard deck. Appropriately enough, it's a Maker Faire deck it uses off-the-shelf guitar tuning pegs, a nut, and a bridge to run strings across the board. There are some sections carved out for electronics, like the pickup, jack, and the spots for the volume and tone knobs. Most importantly, he includes a PDF of the measurements required to stencil in where the fret markings are. Now, because this is a slide guitar, 
You don't have the benefit of a metal fret to pinch down on to lock in a note, so the markings are your only guide to where your slide should be. What I thought was especially cool is that another Instructables user, XTL, left a comment pointing to an Inkscape software plugin that can calculate fretboard measurements at any length. It even does those crazy fanned fretboard designs. It's a free tool and it's just one of those things that I know I'll use or reference at some point, you know? Maybe I'll pair it up with the xylophone making tool from last week's show. And now for some more tips. This week I discovered etcher.io. This is a cross-platform tool for writing disk images to SD cards. And it's been around for a year now, but it's new to me and it's handy for writing Raspberry Pi software to micro SD cards. Also, because it's Mac, PC, and Linux compatible, it's just easy to recommend without having to remember three different tools. I also saw that Adafruit is stocking the Pi-Cade hat for Raspberry Pi. This is a cool design from Pimeroni in the UK that makes it easy to attach a joystick and arcade buttons to your Raspberry Pi. It also includes a little amplifier for connecting up a speaker. It's a great core for any Raspberry Pi arcade project. Also, just a few days ago, I noticed that Noah from Adafruit published the design for these 3D printed enclosures for the Arduino compatible Adafruit feather boards. The design is really well thought out and includes battery storage, mounting holes, and cutouts for a USB cable. Maker Fairs. We have four Maker Fairs this weekend. There's San Antonio, Texas, Dortmund, Germany, Horseheads, New York, and Lynchburg, Virginia. If one of those is near you, you owe it to yourself to go check it out. Also, another reminder that I will be giving a talk and a workshop at the Mission Creek Art Life Tech Festival on Saturday, April 8th in Iowa City. It's free, but if you want to pre-register for one of the 30 spots in the soldering workshop, I'll include a link in the show notes. And that's it for this week's show. And I love making these shows. I really, it puts a smile on my face every time I come out here to the shed and record one of these. So if you want to help support my love of making these things, uh, all you have to do is subscribe to the show if you haven't already. And uh, if you can help me by liking or commenting or sharing this video, all of those things help a lot. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.